In recent weeks, Argentina has suffered one of the worst energy disasters in its history. A record heat wave virtually stopped the country and led to seven deaths and six days of continuous blackouts. The advancement of technology has made it possible for nations never before considered producers in the field of energy to emerge as forces to be reckoned with. Argentina is one of those nations. It possesses one of the highest concentrations of shale reserves in the world, and the increasingly popular business of fracking makes it possible to exploit those reserves. It could turn Argentina into an energy-producing powerhouse by meeting its own energy needs and boosting its faltering economy. But what exactly is fracking, and why is there so much controversy surrounding it? Correspondent Daniel Schweimler traveled to the Vaca Muerta in West Argentina, which contains the bulk of these huge shale deposits, to tell us about the friction and the fear over fracking. This is the Vaca Muerta. What lies under this soil, deep underground, will transform the western province of Neuquén and meet Argentina's short to mid-term energy needs. To get at this shale oil and gas reserves, some of the biggest in the world, will require the mining method known as hydraulic fracturing or fracking. Energy consultant Bernard Bud Weinstein says it's got the energy industry in Argentina and beyond very excited. This country has the potential to once again not only supply its own energy needs from domestic resources, but to get back into the international market by selling oil and gas abroad. Fracking entails boring deep down into the earth as far as three and a half thousand meters before drilling horizontally into the rock. A high pressure mixture of water, chemicals and sand is then directed at the rock, which allows the gas or oil to flow out to the head of the well. It's proved highly effective at other sites around the world, particularly in the United States. The opponents of fracking claim that hydraulic fracturing can pollute groundwater. That has not been the case in the United States. There's not been one documented case of groundwater contamination as a result of hydraulic fracturing. What's important, of course, is to make sure that the well casing is strong. The activity generated by the energy industry in this region is intense. And as the Vaca Muerta site takes off, it's only going to increase, bringing with it jobs and prosperity. But not everybody who lives in this region is happy. This is one of the many regular anti-fracking demonstrations held in the provincial capital, Neokem. At the front of the march are leaders from the local indigenous community, the Mapuche. With so much to gain and so many vested interests banking on the lucrative development of the Vaca Muerta site, the Mapuche say it's often dangerous to speak out. That this house and others, for instance, were burnt by thugs hired by local politicians. Mapuche spokesman Campo Juan Alvino says the long-term effects of fracking are not known while activist Gilberto Juilipan says they're determined to fight its advance every step of the way. It's possible we'll end up without a river with all this pollution. They say the river can't disappear, but who knows? Who can say what will happen to the water and that there's no pollution? There is pollution. Those who take the money are covering it all up. They showed me this pit full of mining waste, which they say has been left by the energy companies following conventional mining operations and is contaminating the air and the surrounding land. They say that this is their land. We were questioned by this private security guard working for the oil industry. He said we were trespassing. Alvino. So all of this land around me has been polluted by the oil and the chemicals that we just saw in that open pool over there. And if I stoop down here and take a handful of this mud and grass, it absolutely stinks of petrol, of oil, of chemicals. It's foul. Ugh. Then they took me to the shores of this man-made lake, the Marimenuco, where they say fracking is already underway, deep under the water. 
We spoke to the site manager who said they were not fracking. What's fracking, he asked me, before saying they were drilling in the conventional way. Argentina alone has neither the technology nor the money required to fully exploit the Vaca Muerta and needs to attract foreign partners, explains local energy consultant Ruben Echeverri. There are difficulties in attracting partners, in attracting investment, because this is a technology that will require a lot of wells, a lot of development over a long time. And today we simply don't have that kind of investment in this country. So we have to resolve our regulatory questions before we can start developing here in an intensive way. Fracking has become a dirty word among environmentalists and some of those living near the oil and gas sites. A coalition of European NGOs last year called on fracking to be suspended until full studies had been carried out. They say it delays the development of alternative clean energy sources, pollutes the water table and uses too much valuable water, contaminates air and soil, causes noise pollution and increases the risk of earthquakes. However, those in the industry said that opponents do not properly understand the technique. What we have to do is start to work on communication. A great part of this problem is caused by a lack of communication between the government, the oil companies and the community in the areas where they're working. When people don't understand something, they react in this way. The energy companies have been drilling in this region for years using conventional mining methods and many locals say their record is not good. Residents here in the town of Agnello say their water is contaminated and they need to fit expensive filters. In five years, you're going to see the consequences of this pollution because there will be nothing but cancer, heavy metals infecting the blood, guaranteed early deaths and malformed fetuses. We should be worried. It won't be us suffering, but our children and grandchildren. What do we want to do for future generations? Argentina and the world need gas and oil, and those in the industry say that alternative renewable energy sources are simply not well enough developed to meet the current demands. Renewables have a role to play, but renewables, at least for the foreseeable future, cannot be counted as base load energy, particularly for power generation because the wind doesn't always blow and the sun doesn't always shine. And until we get to that point of advanced battery storage technology, we're going to continue to need nuclear energy. That's not how these people see it. They fear that with so much at stake, the government and the energy companies are talking as though exploitation of the Vaca Muerta site is already a done deal. Gabriel Cherki is a Mapuche leader. We're going to confront the situation. There's only one thing that the government and the oil companies have guaranteed us, and that's certain death. Whether they kill us today or tomorrow, it's the same. But they're going to have to kill us if they want to install the first tower in this gas region. As the drills bore into the ground and the tankers rumble along the roads of Neoken, the battle lines are being drawn. On the streets, in the political chambers, at the drilling sites, and in music. Here, two members of the Mapuche band, Huelcona, expressing their opposition in song. This is a conflict that has only just begun.